safety concerns for you guys. We want to make sure that this thing does not fall over, so it's built out of American steel. It's uh, spot welded nice. Um, this thing isn't going anywhere. And, uh, is it standard yeah. American? I want to know, because most of the steel comes from China these days. <laughs> uh, the steel might come from China, but it was assembled and welded and cut here. <laughs> There's a couple parts that the base. we already have assembled that are going to come as separate. One is these little are these technically a carabiner? They don't. Uh, technically, yeah, locking carabiner, whatever. So these, I would just say put them on these hoops and just leave them put, or even be. Um, you're not gonna. Those are always gonna have to be there. And the other part of it was on the fan. Is a strap, and you can leave this on even when you're doing the lower or cuts. It doesn't. It doesn't interrupt anything. And it's just one less step that you have to do. So we to set it up. We clock this day to see how long it takes to set up. It's going to be much longer today because we're talking while we're doing it. But I wanted to see how long it took him to, to set this whole uh, system up. And it's about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on your speed and how sweaty you want to get. And to break it down, is about 10 to 15 minutes. So for your cost purposes, a whole house time test, you can average it out. It could be a single fan, at least 45 to 60 minutes to do the test. Mm -hmm. And if there's two fans, you would have to move this from one area of the hallway to the other. The whole thing can be slid, but the hood portion needs to be reset and disconnected. So that takes about two minutes to move it to a second fan. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, that, uh, and, I'll, and I'll touch on this again We worry about when, scratching. So. When we actually put the fan inside the actual stand, but the fan, you'll, or the strap, you wanna make sure that it's relatively snug and that it's on the power side of the handle, and that it also is um, that it's over on this side of this of this tab, because it's going to be held up. And these two things, this tab right here, and this handle, are what's going to help it hold up and be level. If you if you don't put it there, then it's going to be at an angle. <clears throat> so you just want to make sure you put it there. Again, you can you can leave this the strap and the carabiner is on there. That's what I would do, less things that I have to do once I start doing the test. And it doesn't bother us very well, it does. Yeah. Another so, note you got, on this. You have the base, you have four extendable poles. These extendable poles. Um, snap in with the darts. They seem to be at the, at the default height. They seem to work just fine for anything 10 foot ceiling and under. So, Andy and I believe that really, for, unless you have a 12 foot ceiling, you can probably remove the inner, this inner part right here. It'll make it lighter for you to carry up and down. Because most ceilings, most houses that you're going to be doing aren't going to be 12 foot ceilings. I don't, I don't believe a lot of two story homes are all 10 foot ceilings. But and ours is a prototype. Yeah, but you'd be doing the talking and Rick would be doing the work. Oh, I'm not afraid of work. You know me, Dave. I've got to put him to work sometimes, you know. So this base gets assembled first, and then you lay this down. That way you don't have to very carry the weight of the fan and that while you're trying to carry it. We'll understand what he does it. Okay, then the next step would be is to just put this in, in place. And you just slide in here. It'll be, it's a little bit of a, kind of have to put them in evenly as you go around. If you don't have the inner poles in, this would be a little bit easier. This is a prototype one. Yeah, you guys, we haven't even seen yours. You have the newer version that has better clearances. It should assemble and drop in more so it. We already put it together once. So. Intake side down. You want the fan to be blowing upwards. So 
you just set this in here, and this is pretty much where, where it's going to sit. So you can like, kind of position it in the middle, and then just move around your straps. You just hook these in. You mean Andy, do it a few times, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna have a good around here. What's the likelihood that we'll get to the point where we're testing it on? How much is the difference in, in the credit? You, you get half an EDR point if you model a whole house fan with no hers test. You'll get at least two to four EDR points in climate zones 8 through 14. If you model it with the hers, with the hers test, pick it two to four. Two to four. And CC was supposed to release August twenty, the new version of CBET, and that's going to bump our whole house fan uh, EDR points about another 0.5 because there was a computational error, um, has having something to do with the TDB tables. Um, we weren't involved in that. That was just something that the CC detected when they were analyzing all the caps for whole house fans. They said, hey, we found another half port, so I'm not sure if the 2019 version 2 CBEC software that's coming out is actually coming out on August 20. Um, I'm still waiting for confirmation from Todd. So when they're going to de, uh, derate the uh, EDR, or e ERVs? Possibly do it at the same time, yeah. Did you do the so fourth for one? The, the fourth one, I, I've been putting it, connecting it once I have it upright, because it's right at the bottom. So you could just, yeah, the three will hold it up. Yeah. The whole thing is heavy, but it's not heavy when you're lifting it up like that. You just tip it up. Very, very easy to get it situated. It's a little on one side, but that's not too big of a deal. And then you just want to make sure when you set this up, just so you're doing, your, you know, work smarter, not harder. Don't set, don't put this up right underneath because the next step is you're going to actually put the hood up before you connect this to the actual hood. So you want to make sure that that area underneath the fan is free. But set this up somewhere close so that we don't slide it across the room either. So imagine the fan is here. We want you're going to connect the hood first, and then this slides underneath. The hood. Is there something underneath the, the uh, frame? So that, like, felt on our yeah, we've got uh, like guitar yeah. amp felt on it, so it can slide on hardwood floor. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's what you're going to be doing. You're just sliding that thing around. It's going to be too heavy for you to pick up and move, and it would be a little off balance. So you're going to want to slide it. I wouldn't pick it up, but. He might be strong enough to get it. Like Chang King, that thing, and move it. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I would just slide it. I typically slide it from here, and then I'll just drag it under the If you stay low when you're pulling it, it'll, it'll be very stable. That was one of the things that PVC is not capable of doing, is that if you took PVC and you move it, it'll just it'll fall over. So. And I'm not sure if anybody's used the duct blocks before, but these are the same holes that they're used on the duct blocks. Um, I never used them. This just tape was faster to me. Um, but what you're going to want to do is, this order doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to preset the height of these. So you're just going to set up the height and compress this. You don't have to compress it all the way, but you know at least half the way, and then get it locked in place. That way, the pull's the right length already when you're pushing it up. have feedback on whether you need to use that. For a 10-foot ceiling, like on his house, with a 10-foot ceiling, I had to extend this middle this middle one a little bit before I extended the bottom one. This is a smaller ceiling. And then the hood itself, like any other hood that you set up, 
Cano Maxes, they cross crisscross. This one, they're straight up and down like the TSI. Or the older ones. Since we're not doing the camping, let you turn on the air there's, right there. there's four holes in the base for it to slip into, and then opposing four holes on this upper frame. No spring mechanism, and these are just literally those fiberglass poles. If you end up snapping one, we're going to have more you can purchase from us. We can go to Home Depot and buy those long ones that have the reflective strip. You just cut them to length. Nothing special about these. That's not like you're using a store hood. Mm -hmm. Can you shut the window? Mm -hmm. Just turn the air and see if you can do it. Uh, okay. You guys are going to have homes with different height ceilings, so it's going to be pretty close. And there's a marker on the uh, on the hood collar that attaches to this. Just keep in mind that that collar that goes to the bottom of the hood has to be. You want to stay more than a foot away for our installation manual. Yeah, this one's going to be on a ceiling this small, which they don't build in new construction. Um, nobody builds ceilings this low. This is going to be very close, but in a new construction home, you want to make sure that you have one foot away. So then this, once it's assembled like this, you want to get it roughly in position to where it's going to be underneath the, the grill. We're pretending it's right here. These right here, this little ball locks into a little joint here, and you just kind of give it a little push in, and that should lock it in place. And the easiest thing to do is just grab it. You want to line it up. Just kick it in place. You want to make sure that these aren't going to be too far in. And then just take a peek underneath here. Make sure that you're lined up around. If there's any type of can light that's going to be in the way, or if it's right next to a vent, it's going to share the same opening, and you can't get it outside of the opening. Tape it off. So important thing while we're doing this is here's a marker here. You see the seam. This is a the 12 inch seam. This is where you want the top of this fan to be. This house is too short for that, but most new construction is going to be at least eight foot two inches, and you can have that one inch. Um, this is eight. Yeah. This is eight. It's like double your height. It's like new construction. You get that extra foot in new construction. But we're going to pretend that you've got that gap here. So. So this is good up to twelve foot ceiling. This will extend up to fourteen foot. Oh, fourteen foot. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is at its lowest yeah, yeah. setting, and. Like I was saying before, is really you could most likely take out this inner portion mm -hmm. and that'll be good for anything 10 foot and under. Okay. But for your 12 foot ceiling, your big single story house will have all ceilings. Yeah. You want to put those on there. Do you see this being used for any kind of alteration? No. All the new construction. Yeah. I don't think there is no HERS credit for an alteration putting it in a, in a whole house fan. Yeah. yeah. Line these four poles up makes it nice and easy and it's centered. That way you don't get any twisting in the hood. Um, this goes around the hood of our fan. We want to take out any kind of slack fabric support really close, fold it inside out so that the, the zip tie is on the outside because you're going to cinch down the fabric. You want to grab the outside hood? 
And I know Andy mentioned the line. The size of this hood and the size of this duct all plays into the accuracy and all plays into the equations of what makes this thing work and able to zero out in the field. So these, were, these were the issues with the flow box that we had at first was it was too shallow, too much velocity pressure, too much turbulence. Um, and our engineers got to work and figure it out. Fancy numbers, the uh, you know the calculations and figure out what size the hood needs to be for the type of air that we're moving. And then that tra transistor duct. And also why this is elevated up is we want to, we need to have some leeway between the intake and the floor. So I'm pulling the inside and I got the rub on the outside. That way you can remove all the slack inside this and then you can cinch this down. And it works. Some things that we've all tried. Um, Dave asked this question whenever I talked to him is why do we have the stand? Why don't we just put it on the floor and have a duct that goes up to this? Because it, it, it just doesn't, it won't work. There's too much, I, I don't know, maybe Andy knows, he talked more into detail with the engineers on why that doesn't work. Yes, there's a velocity pressure issue that happens with a transient duct that's bent 90 degrees. Plus when you're doing the duct blaster test, for example, and you have a duct that can have one, two bends or whatever, and it doesn't really matter because the goal of that test is to create static pressure uh, for the duct leakage test. But with this one, we're actually measuring how much CFM this is pushing into the system to zero it out. So if you have a duct in two nineties, it's going to mess up all the numbers. Yeah, it's like static the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're changing the system. A lot of, yeah. So we're just talk, I was just talking about a lower stand. That's all. Yeah, and I don't know, Andy, is, oh. is that possible for? I mean, Dave had mentioned that, and I, I didn't know if that if this was a specific height. If it could be a little bit lower, it's shaped Maybe up a little bit Maybe it's designed away. for the 14, 10, 12 foot ceilings, but you know, how many times are you going to get that? Can we, could, could it be? Uh, Absolutely. Can you cut that in half? You could just use the extender. You could just you see how long your thing is, right? Dude, so why can't we oh, yeah. lower it by that much, right? This is the first house we've ever tested where we did this short. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we could easily cut it right here, and then this button would snap into the button down here. And that'll give you the extra foot in the blower door and sit right here. Um, oh, it was just that we're, we're trying to minimize how much room we have in our car. Yeah. You know? And trust me, guys, I the original prototype, I mean, you, you wouldn't even believe it. I, I had to hammer in with the engineers. Everyone drives Priuses or size <laughs> cars. Yeah, there was a... Not was a, everyone's driving around a truck like, you know, you know, some of the independent <laughs> raiders do that don't do the type of volume that the big companies do. Yeah, even if it's, if you imagine a passive flow that you can hold and you can push to get the measurement, there's no way that anyone in this room will be able to hold this fan with a hood attached to it, up to a ceiling, control the rheostat to zero it out in here, and read the CFM at the same time. It was physically impossible to do, that takes four hands. So that's why this has to stand freely while you can turn the rheostat and read the manometer and do that test as a single person. So it was very important that we made it a single person so that he didn't need to send two raiders out to do a whole house fan hearse test. This contraption had to have its own standalone stable stand that wouldn't injure anybody or fall onto a brand new model home that she owned or something like that and damage the furniture or the brand new, you know, the new walls. So that was, it was a lot of give and take that we had to do with the design. Uh, we even had single pole designs that were trying to hold it cantilever tension, but any kind of pressure and vibrations on this, if this was uneven, it creates a gyroscopic thing, and the blower door wants to move like this. And so if you have only two legs or three legs on this, it wants to move if this is not level. There's all kinds of things that we tried, um, including PVC lighter things. So um, we were able to skinny it down. I mean, the, the, the hood itself is really this one big bag and then a pole bag, which has these four poles and these two poles. Um, the rest you already have in your car, which is this bag and the manometer kit and the blower door. So we've added this big flat box, I mean case, and the long bar. It's really, that was the smallest that we could get it. Mm -hmm. So and we were very concerned about your driver's space. And that's, this is the smallest that we could do. Um, there are other iterations. We are totally open to that. If you guys want to send us improvements in the field, you know, we've done Absolutely. a few hundred tests, but you guys are going to be doing thousands of these. And if you go, hey, man, I would love it if I had this hair or 
a ratchet on this strap or whatever ideas. We're open to hearing all of those suggestions from you guys. Um, this is the first iteration. Uh, we've, we've knocked out um, about 150 of these sitting in our warehouse. Uh, 45 are already sold and shipped. So any kind of feedback that you guys can get us, we will improve it. One and of the things that I was worried about is the, is the, the bottom stand part where the things are poking up some of the chips are falling. Yeah. Oh. Is there a way to lay that down and they lock when you pull them up? I mean, that's the, oh, the, that's the big, other than that, I thought it was pretty ingenious, but you know, if there was a bottom, you got a spike sticking, you four spikes sticking there, that's a little bit of a Yeah. We thought about that having hinges. We thought about the actual, the adjustable legs all having hinges, then you'd have a bag that's six feet long. Um, so it had to be detachable and then the hinges adds more cost. No, I'm just talking about the bottom piece. The yeah, no, yeah. So if they could just lay down and then stand up and lock it in place, or have them slide in, so take them off and have them slide. I don't know. Yeah, no, I hear you. I believe, just I, the I, thought you guys can think about for the future. Absolutely. And Somebody's going to hurt themselves on that. So right now, things. this is set up to do the test. All we have to do is hook up the gauge at this point, and we can we can hook that up. Very simple. Again, when you turn on your DG1000 at least, it's gonna be, it's gonna default to pretty much what you need to be to be on. I don't believe, does it save as a memory of what your last setup was or does it reset every time? I've only used it for this test, so I don't know. <laughs> Mine just turns on for dev test every time I turn it on. So it, it remembers the last thing that you had it on for? Yeah. Okay, so it won't just turn on, so forget what I just said about it turning on to the default. It's doing that on mine because it's the only thing I use it for. Yeah. You're gonna uh, set it to blower door open ring. Pressure on the left side, yeah. so that should stay the same. You're not gonna use the flow at 50. You just want it to have it at flow because we're not gonna simulate 50 pascals. We don't want it to do any type of table conversion lookup for 50 pascals. But we just want it to be at flow, your model three, and then whatever ring that you're on. Um, I'm just gonna leave these rings on. I think you guys are understand how the rings work at this stage of your testing careers. Um, but typically, every fan you're gonna to go to, I, I'm going to guess, unless it's a very tiny house, is going to be at least a 4.8 or larger, and this open ring should be just fine for that. A 4.8, you may, you may have to go to the ring A, but with me, just like blower door, I set up my blower door and I put it on ring A because I know that's going to work for almost every single house that I that I do. And if I need to ring down, then I will. So that's Same thing open ring. With open it's going to be now. for ninety percent of your homes. So you just want to make sure it's on open, one second average, just so you can dial it in, and your um, this is just. This tube, it's not really meant to be hooked up directly in there because then you'd have to have this right here. So just hook up another tube into it. You just got an extension on that. Yeah, just another connector. And then. So the hood goes to channel A as your input? As your input because you're going to be referencing the inside. But again, if you flip those around, it's just going to flip it for. When it's really negative in there, it'll be positive. 